I'm Marion Ingram. I'm a Holocaust survivor. My name is Stephen Kapos. Um, I am a, holo a child survivor of Holocaust. Suzanne Weiss, Holocaust survivor and Palestinian solidarity activist. I'm here uh, to protest uh, the slaughter of people in Gaza. You need some historical context. Now look, I used to be a Zionist. I'm a, as you mentioned, I'm a Holocaust survivor. Zionism was very important for me as a salvation of the Jewish people. Until I found out that the state was founded based on the extirpation, the expulsion, and the multiple massacres of the local population. And that's not historically controversial. What's happening on America's college campuses is horrific. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. The way that the Israeli government is using the memory of the Holocaust in order to justify what they are doing to the Gazans is a complete insult to the memory of the Holocaust. I think that Biden needs to defund uh, all of the money that is given to Israel. I think he should not only call for a ceasefire, I think he needs to start thinking about peace. We cannot continue to make wars and then call for ceasefires only to have wars start again after the ceasefire ends. We've experienced this over and over and over again. It is ridiculous that we are not able to think clearly. My husband has an expression, and that is all about the Benjis. I think that uh, the happiest people in the universe must be the manufacturers of armaments. The fact that, that the United States is complicit in this murder of children is to me a horrific uh, indictment of inhumanity. I find it horrific that the politicians have the nerve to censure righteous voices for peace and for the lives of Gazans who are being murdered. It is slaughter that is happening. The Palestinian people have a right to return to their homes with dignity and equality and peace. The government of Israel does not speak for the Jewish people. Zionism is a racist ideology. Judaism has never stood for racism. Conflating Zionism and Judaism is criminal. It's an unforgivable crime. Not only to the Jewish people, but to the Palestinians and to humanity. And we also demonstrate against the conflating of Jewishness with Zionism, which is what the Israeli state is trying to do, which does nothing else but increases anti-Semitism. So we are trying to counter that by demonstrating that Jews and Holocaust survivors are against that. Most Israelis are not aware of the history of what the Palestinians have suffered. They don't know that in 1948 there were multiple massacres of large numbers of people by Israeli forces. They don't know the history, the subjective experience of the Palestinians. And in the absence of that knowledge, October 7th would just strike them as another horrific anti-Semitic event. I understand the desire for defense and certainly even the desire for revenge, but that's in the absence of knowing what the Palestinian experience has been. And the Western press, and as in all countries where the local population has been displaced, the majority of the population doesn't know the history or the subjective experience. So if you're asking me how to move forward, let's inform ourselves of the actual experience of both sides, not just one side. Hamas's attack on Israel does not justify the slaughter of women and children, especially children. 
I was a child of war. I have experienced all of these things. I have also, I've also known for a fact that what Israel is doing will not end this conflict. It will only exacerbate it. It will increase resistance. Israel has no right to impose an occupation on people. Now look, I was born in Hungary. In 1956, when I was 13, studying for Bar Mitzvah, there was the Great Hungarian Revolution against Soviet occupation. And uh, it was after that revolution that we became refugees and came to Canada. Now, did Russia have the right to defend itself against the Hungarian revolutionaries? You know, so, the, and, and mostly when we talk about Israel's right of defense, we're taking isolated Palestinian actions, but we're not saying that this population also has the right to defend against the, against the occupation. I'm not justifying the, the terrible events of October the 7th. I'm talking in the absence of historical awareness. It all just looks like Israel defending itself. But against whom? Against the population that has been massacring in a number of thousands for 80 years and taking their lands and destroying their homes and jailing their children and torturing them. That's the history. Now, unless we know that, it all looks like this poor little country trying to defend itself. But against whom? Against people that's been occupying and displacing for 80 years. That's the history, as Israeli historians have shown. I don't make this stuff up. I wish it wasn't true. I wish I could believe in the dream of the Jewish state. I love that dream, except I found out at what price, at what nightmare that imposed on the Palestinians. Did you know that the Likud Charter, the ruling party in Israel, excludes a Palestinian entity west of the Jordan River? From, from the river to the sea, for me, means a single Palestinian state, which is democratic, where all nations and ethnicities have equal rights. And I think no matter how long it takes, that will eventually come about and uh, no other solution is practical. Um, the two-state solution, which is sometimes trotted out, the time for that has passed. Um, there is not enough land left for the Palestinians. So it has to be like it was in South Africa, a single democratic state. We have tremendously warm reception and appreciation from the typical members of the march. We get handshakes and hugs and some people stand and some women cry seeing the placards. It's a great and warm experience. When the right-wing section of the present government is trying to press for uh, the banning of these marches on the grounds that they create no-go areas for, for Jews and uh, you know, they are anti-Semitic. Uh, we know that this is complete rubbish and, and the, the very opposite is true. Today's marches are having a very hopeful aspect that it is so large, so persistent, so global that eventually the um, Western leadership, which, which are trying to deny what, what is actually going on, will be forced to face up to it. And I think we are not far from that. There is a question of historic responsibility towards injustice, genocide, and fascism. If you are just indifferent, if you do not take a stand, you acquire a degree of guilt without any doubt. And I think it is imperative to, to uh, assert uh, opposition and, and even at some degree of disadvantage and risk if you want to be guilt-free when history judges what's happening.